Hello everyone, welcome back to part three of our coping skills strategies. It's me, Catherine, still here with you. Um, hopefully you're not sick of me yet because we're going to keep going with this, but you know, for part one was the deep breathing. Obviously, you know, I love that. You guys are probably experts at it right now. Part two last week was mindfulness. You are not experts at it if you've just started. And if you say you are, I know you're lying because it's more difficult than that. So keep practicing it. It's going to get easier. So keep practicing it. So part three, what's it going to be? Okay. So journaling. Journaling. Yes, I said it. Journaling. This is a huge coping skill. And I think it gets a really bad stigma because it's like, oh, I'm just in my diary thinking like, oh, today. No. Okay. Journaling is a very effective tool. And if you guys know, I'm going to go through the why. So why is because a lot of times we're caught up in our heads, right? And we don't sometimes don't feel comfortable talking to someone or we don't want to talk to someone about it or we don't have the, the support at that moment to talk about it. So journaling is a really great skill to get what we're thinking out of our and our heads out onto paper, right? And think about it. Like so many times have you just been sitting there and like you're just like for like five minutes, you just you're thinking about something and you just can't get it out of your head. So journaling is a really helpful skill to get out what is going on in here out on paper, okay? To help for a short amount of time distract you and get get you thinking about other things, okay? So there's a lot of different forms of journaling too. And I just am going to name a couple for you guys to try out. So foremost, right? Literally like journaling, like writing out what you're feeling. Some people like to do this in the morning. Some people like to do it at night. I encourage people to give themselves, if this is something they're going to do, Give yourselves like five to 10 minutes and put an alarm on your phone and sit down. And for those five to 10 minutes, just write down whatever you want, what's going on in your mind, whatever it is, write it down. Okay. And once that alarm goes off, that timer goes off, you're done. You stop what you're writing, you stop your thought, and then you move on to another activity that's going to take your mind off of that. Right. So this way it's not like you're writing for hours on end and still ruminating, right? This is giving you a distinct time to just get everything out and then move forward. Another type of journaling that people like to do is, and I encourage this as well, is gratitude, right? Gratitude journaling. This is a really big skill as well, because a lot of times we get so caught up in a lot of the negative things that are going on, especially nowadays with all of just everything in the world right now, right? So it's really easy for us to get caught up in those moments of negativity and going through and actually identifying and keeping a journal of the things that you are grateful for can be really helpful. And science proves this, right? It's helpful to get your mind off of it and acknowledge the things that you are grateful for. So writing down one to three things, heck, you can write down as many things as you want, at least one thing that you're grateful for and keeping a journal of that and reviewing it from time to time. It can also be really helpful so really helpful for people to write down positives from the day too, kind of going off of that. Because again, so a lot of times when we're focusing on things that are going wrong, it puts our mood, it makes us in a worse mood, right? So think about it, like A plus B equals C. If you're thinking of negative things and ruminating on the negative things from the day, it's going to lead you to be in a more terrible mood, right? So that's instead trying to distract our mind and think about things that are more positive. Now, I'm not saying like there's crappy days. Let's get real. I'm not sugarcoating that. Like I'm not trying to be like, think of sunshine and rainbows. Well, Catherine, like I failed my exam. I was late to practice. I got kicked out of practice because of that. Like it was just a cruddy day. I'm not, I'm not denying that. I'm not telling you to just be like, but you know what? It's okay. Instead, let's try and make it like more neutral thoughts and think of like positives. Literally, like I'm thinking right now, the sun's out, like huge, huge for the mood, right? So just about identifying those little things can help shift your perspective, okay? You can also do positive affirmations, right? I personally, I keep a journal of quotes that I love. I'm a huge mantra person and I write these out and actually color them out because that's helpful for me and it gets my mind distracted and reminds me of these things and I go back and look at it. So journaling is a really, really important skill, and I think it can be really helpful for people, especially if you're not ready to talk to someone. So writing it out can be really helpful, okay? You can also start to see patterns that you have, too, like what's triggering your negative thoughts or moods, which can be helpful, too. So go get a journal. You can do this. 
I'm excited for you. Try the mantras, try the gratitude, try just journaling, all right? And let me know, or Angelo, let Angelo know how it's going, okay? Also, if you guys have any other skills that you're interested in and want to learn more about, let Angelo know and he can contact me and we'll get those up here too. So keep up the breathing, keep up the mindfulness, and now in your repertoire is journaling. Bye, guys.